Welcome people. Today let us start off with calcium channel blockers. Okay. Calcium channel blockers. Yeah. So <clears throat> in anti-anginal drugs, we have seen nitrates already. Now we want to move on to calcium channel blockers. Correct? Do you know calcium channel blockers uh, examples? Okay. Examples are Verapamil, that is a phenyl alkyl amine, then diltiazin, then nifidipine, amlodipine. Remember these four names. Verapamil, diltiazin, nifidipine, amlodipine. Actually, if you know verapamil, nifidipine, amlodipine, that should be enough. Okay? Calcium channel blockers. Example, verapamil, diltiazin, nifidipine, Thank you so much. So the examples of calcium channel blockers are verapamil, diltiazin, nifidipine, amlodipine. These four names, if you remember, it's enough. Now, again, look at the examples. Verapamil, verapamil, then diltiazin, we have not put photo. Then this one is nifidipine. Then this one is representing amlodipine. Okay. Very good. So let us go back to the classification and see again. So you have verapamil, which is a phenyl alkyl amine. Diltiazin, which is a benzothiazepine. Then you have nifidipine and amlodipine. All the dipines, dipines, dipines are dihydropyridines. Okay. Deans, deans. Dipines, okay, dihydropyridines, DHPs, you should know what DHPs are. DHPs means nifidipine, amlodipine. So, just basically some rough information we will give you. We are looking at anti-anginal drugs, right? So, we want to load, reduce the load on the heart. So, these calcium channel blockers, they work both on the heart and both on the blood vessels, okay? Heart, less calcium, less work it will do. So, it will have negative chronotropic, negative, dronotropic, negative, inotropic effect on the heart. That means heart rate will reduce, conduction will reduce and also the contraction force of the heart will reduce. Now calcium channel blockers, they will again block calcium, no calcium. So the smooth muscles cannot contract. Now if the smooth muscles cannot contract, the smooth muscles will relax. So if the smooth muscles in the blood vessel, the smooth vessels will relax, the blood vessels will dilate. If the blood vessels dilate, the resistance they offer will reduce. So the heart will be able to pump easily. You understood, right? The resistance, the total peripheral resistance will reduce because of arterial dilatation. Hence the heart will pump easily. The afterload will reduce. So what and all you understood till now? Negative inotrop uh, chronotropic, dromotropic, inotropic effect, dilatation of blood vessels, decrease of afterload of heart. Fine? Very good. So, just look at uh, these uh, verapamil. Verapamil is actually used in angina. Okay, anti-anginal. Actually, it is anti-anginal. It can also be used for arrhythmia. So, anti-arrhythmic also it can be. So, verapamil very important for exam. Very important for life also. It is actually used in anti-angina. Coming to DHP, that is dihydropyridines. You have nifidipine. Nifidipine is actually used as an antioxotokics. Tokics. Tokics. Are you able to see? So nifidipine antioxytoxics. How do you pronounce that? Nifidipine. Antioxytoxics. Toxics. Okay, toxics. So, <clears throat> nifidipine is actually used as an antioxytoxic, that is a tocolytic. So, basically it is used as anti-contraction medication, a labor suppressant, okay. So, if a person is going into premature labor, okay, probably they get this. Then amlodipine. Amlodipine is uh, actually, actually finally where they use, you know, as an anti-hypertensive it is used, okay. Especially in diabetics, uh, the Anti uh, hypertensive they choose is amlodipine. Okay, so and everything is fine for you. Just uh, wake up. What are we studying? Calcium channel blockers. Correct. Verapamil, where it is used? 
anti anginal it is also used in anti arrhythmia very good then diltiazem actually we have not seen any specific use then coming to nifedipine nifedipine is used as a anti anti to uh, oxy toxic correct anti oxytocic then coming to um, amlodipine amlodipine is actually used as an anti hypertensive especially in diabetic people so these are the actual uses you should know okay extra extra textbooks wise you can know more okay now let us move on to other things available in this chapter okay so calcium channels there are actually so many types of calcium channel these are voltage sensitive okay voltage sensitive they are, they are. now you have l type t type n type three types given in kd tripathi now l type is why it is called l type because it is long lasting for us na if you see the name of drugs here you can see that nifedipine verapamil diltiazem all these work on l type so for us focus is only in l type okay so now nice. it's only l type we have to learn now because it acts only on l type all the drugs that we are focused on yes very easy very easy so l type is what you have to focus on then you have t type t type is transient type anyways we leave that n is neuronal okay we are not going to the details we want l type it is a voltage sensitive calcium channel okay so where in all these l type um, voltage sensitive calcium channels will be there they will be in the heart and in the smooth muscle where will the smooth muscle bus be guys come on you tell me where are the smooth muscles in the blood vessels yes <clears throat> so uh, l type is important for us why because it is there on heart also it is there on smooth muscles also and all the drugs we want to talk about are in this only they all are going to block these l type channels what are these drugs going to do they are not very good they actually going block these l type channels but it is going to help us right how by reducing the angina we want to what do we want to do we want to reduce angina that's why we are looking at anginal drugs anti anginal drugs so how are these going to help if we block the calcium channels there will be negative chronotropic dromotropic inotropic action and on the arteries there will be dilatation hence there will be less total peripheral resistance reduced after load okay mainly it works on arteries okay it does not work on uh, veins that much okay so oxygen demand of the heart reduces and hence there is reduced angina okay guys we hope you are able to understand some terms right so it will have negative chronotropic effect why because it will suppress the sa node so the heart rate will reduce negative dromotropic because the av node conduction will be slowed down so negative dromotropic effect inotropic effect also is negative it is going to reduce the inotropic effect so the strength of contraction will reduce understood so that was what we were looking at okay so heart you understood negative chronotropic dromotropic inotropic effect blood vessels especially the arteries uh, you have to explain in detail no calcium means smooth muscles will relax so the ar arteries will dilate so there is a reduced total peripheral resistance so there is reduced after load okay so there is reduced oxygen demand by the heart so there will be reduced angina okay on the coronary artery some minimal dilatation will be there and veins not much effect okay so basically after load will reduce pre load not much reduction okay quickly look at the pharmacokinetics they are all given orally as you can see here they are well absorbed uh, through the gi tract okay they undergo first pass metabolism they are uh, bound to plasma proteins they are metabolized in liver excreted in urine nothing new here whatever you have seen so far in all the stories na same thing given orally means obviously they are given orally because they know it will get absorbed well by the git then it will undergo first pass metabolism in the liver then it is plasma bound it will get metabolized in liver and metabolites are excreted in urine all same pharmacokinetics let's take a recap and wind up this video
So we have started off with anti-anginal drugs. We looked at nitrates. Then we have, in this video, we have just started off with calcium channel blockers. We know that it works on the heart and the blood vessels. It reduces afterload. It uh, makes the heart, uh, you know, negative chronotropic, negative dromotropic, negative inotropic effect on the heart. The examples of calcium channel blockers, phenyl alkyl amine. Phenyl alkyl amine. That is, phenyl alkyl amine is what? Verapamil. Then you have benzothiazepine. Benzothiazepine is diltiazin. Then you have DHPs. This is dihydropyridines. Examples, nifidipine, amlodipine. For now, this much is enough. Come back in the next video. Let us look at the other examples. And let us look at the uses and adverse effects of calcium channel blockers. Say bye.